We're really in it now. We have, uh, we have Kamala running, right? <laughs> You want you want to know the the wildest thing about about uh, Kamala running is I saw her first like two campaign events right, and just to have somebody talking regular, <laughs> like like truly just talking talking regular. I was like she might as well have been break dancing the way that. The way she went up there and said thank you and was remembering names and stuff, she might well as well have been hitting that. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. You know, because some people say that, you know, they don't see Kamala as president, but I, I see Kamala as president, because I thought she already was president, right? <laughs> and what I mean is, when Biden dropped out, I got a notification on my phone, and the notification on my phone was from a news outlet who worded the news very poorly in the headline, because I was, I was at home, and all I saw was, Biden's gone, Kamala's in. <laughs> And, and gone is a very, you gotta use gone very carefully when you talk about Joe Biden. You can't just be out here saying gone willy nilly, right? And so when they said gone, I was like, oh, that was, that was the COVID COVID he caught. Like that was, he got the real one then. That's, if he gone, oh no. And then I realized that he had actually stepped away. He had dropped out, and I was like, "Oh, thank goodness!" Because like this is this is the thing that I, I, now that now that he's out of the race, I do think it's very important to have an honest conversation about Joe Biden, about his presidency, right? Because this is the thing that people forget about Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a granddaddy, okay? So for a president, he seemed slow, he seemed a bit weak and frail. For a granddaddy, he was killing it. <laughs> All right? Like, really take a step back for a second and think about the granddaddy. Think about your granddaddy, right? What's on the agenda in a day for your granddaddy? <laughs> really be fair, really be honest with yourself. What do you expect your granddaddy to do in a day? First thing on the docket is to wake up, hopefully. <laughs> Second, you know, have some jam. <laughs> Tell some stories. Yeah, I mean, like. Watch some westerns, and then, then there's some naps to get got, right? <laughs> You don't, you don't fly your granddaddy on 13-hour flights and then make him talk to a whole country and then be like, he doesn't seem up to the job. Like... Because <laughs> Biden, Biden was busy just being a granddaddy. Everyone loves to forget that. We went to Biden as a granddaddy, and we were like, hey, we need you to run. You need... And then he was like, are you sure? <laughs> and we were like, yeah, we think you're the only one that can do it. Please run. And then he ran, and then he won. And then for three and a half years, nobody did any homework. Nobody did any building up of any other candidates. No, nobody did any real research into who was next up. So then, you know, election time comes along. They're like, hey, we need you again. And he was like. <laughs> I 
I'm more granddaddy now <laughs> than I was before. They were like, please, Joe, come on, you know? Because that's, that's one thing that, I, I don't know. I, I, look, I look at it and I think that both we and history should remember Biden for doing an incredibly patriotic and courageous thing. That stepping aside is a big deal, right? And I, I, I want to, it, it's something that I hope he always knows that we appreciate. For better or for worse, we appreciate it because, you know, some people wouldn't have done that. Some people would have let their ego get in the way. Some people, because this man told the world, he met with world leaders and told them, guys, I'm running, I'm going to win, it's going to be fine. And then he had to drop out, right? Dropped out on a Sunday in a tweet. on a Sunday with a tweet with COVID. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, maybe I'm not being fair and that's okay, but I was, I was furious at, at Biden when he got COVID. How dare you get COVID the same week Trump got shot at? <laughs> Trump got shot at blood and stuff and then Biden over here, oh. <laughs> I was furious. But I, but I really, I really want us, and and I think that it's some, it's something that I wish more leaders did because, because in a weird way, it did feel for a second like they actually listened, because we had been saying we were like, guys, I don't feel great, <laughs> and then something happened. That almost never happens. This is America. And I think there's like this weird asterisk on his, on his political career and on his legacy now because then people are like, where does he go from here? He's still president for like six months and we're already like, where does he go from here? Oh, that's so sad. I don't think it's sad at all. I think that Biden has a chance to stamp his legacy now. This dude is, is he's done. He said he's done. He's not coming back. He's not running for anything else. He's towards his twilight years and everything like this, this, this is it. So he has the chance to do what every politician ever promises that they're going to do. You, you got to remember, when people run for the first time, they're talking all that good stuff, right? When people run for the first time, I'm going to do this. I don't care. I'm not taking anybody's money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then they get in, and then they get God, right? Then all of a sudden, they're talking like an assistant manager zombie. They're like, well, we have to really look at the votes. <laughs> what did they do to you? But that Biden doesn't have that. He hasn't, he hasn't to worry about a second term. He doesn't have to worry about next position. This dude could have the most radical presidency for the rest of the time that he's in office. He has months left to exact some of the craziest change you can imagine because he's never coming back. This is it. This is what people wish our politicians had, right? Because you don't know who somebody is until they put in their two weeks. <laughs> When somebody put those two weeks in and they're still professional and you're like, oh, okay, they really a good worker, right? Most people put those two weeks in and they're like, two weeks, these nuts. <laughs> two, Biden right now has the power to just go ahead and just drop, drop executive orders like mixtapes. Just all the, this dude, this dude could just straight up say, hey, everybody gets free lunch and come and kill me. <laughs> right? Free school lunch for kids. Everybody get maternity leave. How about that? You can fight me in court. I won't be there. You can fight me in court. Right? And then you, and then you look at, you know, you look at Kamala and, and what her campaign's going to be like and what, what the opposition against her is going to be like. And it's already, it's already started in some sense, but you can tell that people don't really know how to attack her. Not exactly, right? Like, they're going to try the regular stuff, like the racist stuff and all. She'll get some sexism. Don't worry. She'll get it. She'll get some sexism. But, like, really attacks, like things that make you go, ooh, I don't know about Kamala, right? They don't know. 
And you, and you can tell they don't know, because I actually, okay. <laughs> I saw this, one attack I saw against Kabla. This is, this is wild, okay, let me see. All right. No, I'm just looking around, because I feel like, look, I think maybe only the black people will get it first, but I'm gonna bring everybody along, right? Because, because then, because then basically there was an attack on Kamala where they were like, Kamala Harris's great, 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 great granddaddy was an Irish slave owner that went to London to oppose abolition. And then every black person I know was like, yeah. <laughs> Sorta of checks out. Um, <laughs> there's a reason it's her great, 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 great granddaddy and her great, 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 great grandma wasn't mentioned. <laughs> and if you know, you know, right? <laughs> um, that's what's so crazy to me is that I'm not saying Kamala's the perfect candidate at all. And I, and I, you know, she said herself, she's gonna have to earn and win your vote and everything. And she plans to do that. But I will say the last time somebody had to go back to the 1800s to attack a candidate. <laughs> was maybe never. That's so crazy. Her great, great, great. Yeah. But then you should ask some more questions. Like, why is that? And then, huh, huh, oh. You know what I mean? Because the people only, the only people that caught it are the people who really understand slavery. And that's the thing that's so crazy is that Republicans are trying so hard to attack Kamala, they may accidentally teach. <laughs> like I thought you burned all the critical race theory books. <laughs> <laughs> 